Surfing is not always a rose-coloured, blissful experience. There will inevitably be some frustration involved as you try to progress, and the one huge factor which often acts as a big barrier to that progression is the waves. If you're new here, my name is Kale. I'm a surfer and a filmmaker, and here you'll find all sorts of epic surf content like tutorials to help you surf better, important reviews, and more. So subscribe down below and join me on Instagram at Kale's Broccoli. On a recent trip to visit my family in South Australia, I was greeted with the waves I grew up surfing. Mushy, onshore, and tricky junk. And although the sessions I had weren't exactly what I wanted, I do know that they're actually really good for my surfing. And that's not entirely surprising, especially when you consider some of the best surfers in the world actually grew up in rather average surf. I'm thinking Kelly Slater in Florida and whew, Philippe Toledo in Brazil, and for that matter, half the world tour being from Brazil right now. Now, with the Australian summer coming up, and a lot of small, tricky, mushy, sloppy waves expected, I thought I'd take today to give you guys the tips on how to approach these surfs so that you can get the most out of them. This video is brought to you by my Ultimate Surf Skate program. It's a controlled system to fast track your surfing progress. I'll share more about it at the end of this clip. The number one consideration for surfing small, weak waves? It's board selection. Now, obviously I have quite a range of boards these days, but I've just brought out these two. Now, you might not immediately recognize which one would be better for small waves. Let me go through that now. In small waves, we want to generate speed. Speed is often the difference between a well-surfed small wave and a poorly surfed small wave. And that means we need a board that's nice and flat on the bottom without much curvature, as this will offer the least resistance against the surface of the water. Now, board technology has come a long way, with technologies in place to help reduce weight and drag in the water to maximise speed. But generally speaking, it's the outline you want to consider. Notice here the differences between small wave grovel boards and regular performance boards. What do you notice? Now this board here for example, it's longer, it's thinner, it's more so built for controlling and harnessing the speed that a wave has to offer as, to, as opposed to generating that speed itself. Now this board, it's my new signature board that I'm working on with Sanova TBA. It's flat, okay, it's super flat. It's built for generating speed because for me, that's 95% of the surfs that I have. Because it's shorter, it's also going to fit in the wave a lot easier than something longer like this. The next thing we need to talk about is top half surfing. Surfing in the power zone in small waves. It's super important. The power zone is essentially the top third of a wave. This is the area which will offer up the most speed for a surfer because it's where most of the swell's energy is. In small waves, it is super important to use this zone with optimal speed flow technique to generate speed. Notice here how whilst applying relatively poor speed generation technique, the surfer also rides at the bottom of the wave. Now as a result, he loses all his speed and momentum very quickly and the wave runs off without him. Notice here in this clip how a better speed flow technique is applied. However, the surfer doesn't move into the power zone of the wave. In the end, he has to force the aerial maneuver at the end with less speed than he could have had, which ends in a failed attempt.
A more optimal approach would be something like this, where the surfer makes a conscious effort to put themselves in that upper third of the wave, whilst applying good speed flow technique to move down the line. This results in a better wave overall. So moving forward, be very conscious to make sure that your first turn, as soon as you pop up, is one that takes you high on the wave. You can even initiate this process as you are paddling in by looking down the line and up to the lip as you actually stand up. The final piece of the small wave puzzle that I want to talk about is wave entry. It really is one of the most crucial parts of surfing, especially in both small waves and in big waves as well. By ensuring that you take off on the absolute peak of a small wave, you can guarantee the maximum amount of speed available on that ride. If you catch the wave on the shoulder, you'll immediately find that you're playing catch up on the face. By catching the wave at its tallest point, you ensure that you have a high amount of speed relative to the rest of the wave, which by the way, is a great recipe for good surfing. We've talked a lot about speed today. Speed generation happens to be one of the most important aspects of surfing. And that's why we focused on it in my ultimate surf skate program. Compressing at the right time and extending at the right time can make or break your progression as a surfer. And with this controlled repetitive training program, it's the fastest way to get it down pat. It's also a great way to progress into fast paced, intermediate to advanced maneuvers as well. Check it out at the link in the description below or at thesurfersroadmap.com. Well, I hope you liked that one, guys. If you did, make sure you subscribe to the channel and join me on Instagram as well, at Kale's Broccoli. Believe it or not, this is the first video that I've actually been able to offload to an editor, an incredible editor friend of mine. Um, and that's all thanks to my incredible patrons, those people who have joined my surf exclusive membership group over at uh, Patreon. You guys are the best and uh, you've been able to help me make this content more regular from now on and hopefully to a, to a higher quality as well. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Yo.